Hello again, everyone. Melth here. With a special side video to my usual challenge run. I'll be battling Elminster, talking about strategies for that, and also the pros and cons of doing it at all. Watch out for spoilers. Guys, as the weary traveler, here in the end of the mountain pass area. Or, if you go through Grimforge to the Shadowcurse Lands instead, you'll meet him in the elevator up from Grimforge to the Shadowcurse Lands. Or, if you find a way to skip both of them, he'll just show up in the Shadowcurse Lands. But, that gets me to the next important point there. His purpose is to go to camp and talk to Gale. And the thing is, if you kill him, you will lose Gale forever. Not right away. But in Act 2, Gale will leave the party forever and you miss out on all of his Act 3 content and so forth. So that's a big loss if you're trying to use Gale in the party. Obviously, you can't do that. Or if you just want to have him around to blow up the final boss or something like that. You can't do that either. So for my challenge run, that was a big trade-off to consider. On the one hand, I tried to fight everything, and the other hand, I tried to do all the quests and all the content and so forth. So I put it up for a vote. People voted to not do that on the main run and do this on the side video instead. Hence, this video. So, what are the advantages for killing him? The disadvantage is losing out on Gale forever. Well, you might think you get some crazy gear from the most powerful wizard in the realms, but actually you won't. You get, won't get anything from him. This is a simulacrum, not the real Elminster. Hence, he's a construct and he melts into a puddle of water when he dies. He is not, in fact, the Wicked Witch of the West. So, what you get from him is 1,000 XP, which might sound like a lot. Yeah, it's nice, but I would say it's about the same as you get from a room full of drunk kobolds at the nearby monastery, so don't get too excited about it. The real reward, of course, is glory. This is one of the toughest fights, probably the toughest fight in Act 1, so just winning it is a lot of fun. Fairly tough if you're doing a challenge run like me where, of course, I can't just go in guns blazing to every fight. I'm low on resources because it's the end of Act 1 at this point. I'm out of spell slots and I haven't built the rest. So, what is the best way to tackle him? Well, you might think silence. It's a trap, though. The thing is, whether you silence him with a silence spell or with you know, the Susser dagger, Elminster, and only Elminster, can cast Autolux Freezing Sphere and only Autolux Freezing Sphere while silenced. I wonder if I have a scroll of Autolux here. Probably not. It'd be pretty high level to drop. Yeah, I don't have it. Suffice to say, Autolux Freezing Sphere is a devastating spell for this time in the game, and is in fact his most powerful spell. So the weird quirk is that if you silence him, he can cast that spell, and he will cast that spell because he can't cast anything else. And that's his most powerful spell, so silencing kind of makes him stronger, if anything. If you don't silence him, he might still cast Autolux, Freezing Sphere, yes. But he might cast Sunbeam, which is powerful, but not as powerful. Or he might cast Polymorph, which is like a joke at this point. Or he might cast Slow, which is a nuisance, but not as bad. And he can break his concentration on that, and then he basically wastes his turn. So, silence, less than worthless. Don't try it. Now, you also can't really crowd control him very well, because the saving throws are pretty great almost across the board. Strength is his one weakness, but there aren't that many complete shutdown spells targeting strength. Entangle is pretty good, but it's not going to be enough. His dexterity is not unbeatable, but it's pretty good. Constitution is pretty much unbeatable. Wisdom, pretty much unbeatable given that his proficiency in it. And he also has magic resistance, so he gets you know advantage in all the saving throws too. So you can't really rely on crowd control. You can make it work if you stack up enough buffs to your save DC and enough nerfs to his rolls, but it's hard to do. It's probably not as easy as just chewing through his massive hit point pool and massive armor glass. And I mean, that isn't easy, so that's saying something. As an afterthought, let me mention two things that he doesn't have. He doesn't have the shield spell, which like every good wizard should have. It's extremely powerful. So that makes him quite vulnerable to attacks compared to how he should be with 22 real armor glass. He also doesn't have the counter spell spell, which is bizarre for such a high-level wizard. So, you can cast whatever you want around him, he won't stop you. That's good to know. Now, the last thing to know about him is that he basically always wins initiative, because he has 18 dexterity, and he has alertness, giving him an unmatched in Act 1 and almost unmatched in most of the rest of the game, plus 9 initiative. Not easily dealt with. Now, my party is pretty optimized to win initiative. We all have high dexterity, we all have alertness, except for Astarian, who has the Gloom Soccer bonus instead, but still, we can't reliably beat him currently. I mean, right now I've got an 8, so that'll usually lose to him, an 8, usually lose to him, a 9, so 50-50 basically, and a 10 for Astarian, but only because Astarian is using this special weapon here. The Soulbreaker Greatsword. You get that from the nearby Githyanki Kresh, if you take it from Kithrak Therizin, who's their military leader. Kind of a mini-boss there. 
It's a great stat stick for this point in the game, but just holding it to give plus two initiative is pretty valuable for this fight. There are also some armors to give plus one initiative you can use to optimize things further. I have hide armor, for example, I can give to Karlak here. Let me try that. Hide armor plus two is available early on in the game from like tons of merchants, so shouldn't have any trouble acquiring that. Oh, I think that over encumbered a star again. Let's take the armor back out of his inventory. AC doesn't matter for this fight. Yeah, there we go. They're both unencumbered. All that matters is winning initiative and be able to just survive and beat this guy down before he can kill you. So, let us do some buffs, I think. Oil of Accuracy is pretty good here. You definitely want more accuracy against this guy so you don't miss too many attacks against this huge armor class. So let's have maybe Korlak do a Bless. On what will be our this fight, our three most important attackers. And we'll have Astarian walk forward and maybe apply an Oil of Accuracy. Then let's have Ballista go forward and start the fight. And this will be an important little detail here. Who there? I swap out, and then I have a Starion. He sees this dead rabbit over there. That's going to be our motive here. We've got to avenge poor Fiverr, who's been killed by this evil wizard. Picks a fight. The consequences are hardly surprising. So what you might notice there... Okay, he got super good luck, but the important thing was... Ability drain applied. It reduces dexterity, and therefore reduces initiative by one, making it a more beatable eight. He still got good luck. He rolled a max roll initiative, so I could not beat that, but... At least Astarian goes first. That's probably my number one tip for beating him initiative, basically, is put on the best stuff you've got, and then try to lower his initiative by hitting him with Ability Drain. Which, if you don't know, is an illithid power that you can get pretty early in Act 1, really. And basically, the first attack you do against a target in a round will lower the stat that you use to do that attack by 1. So if you use a ranged weapon, like a crossbow, that uses Dexterity to hit, so it lowers their Dexterity by 1, lowers his initiative by 1, which... You know, if I'd had decent luck, would have maybe beat him, but I had bad luck. So, let's get to work here. One issue we have is the party kind of is spread out at this point, so I can't cover them in one darkness as I'd hoped to. But what can I do? I guess I can step forward, and maybe I'll shoot him with a piercing shot, which will hopefully apply gaping wounds, which will be beneficial if it hits. I'll do a lot of attacks against him in this battle. Well, there's that chance wasted. Let's hit him with Dread Ambusher. Okay, I mean, the damage is nice. Critical hits barely matter for Astarian, but it's nice. So then maybe I'll do a Darkness to cover myself here. It won't cover the whole party, but hopefully it'll cover enough of us that he can't just blast us with his favorite AoE spells. It falsely claims the Ballista can go, he cannot go. All right, so he missed these steps. We could backlash that. I recommend not doing that. You want to backlash his more powerful spells instead that are higher level and therefore make him take more damage. So let him go over there. He'll probably now cast something... Okay, cast slow, which is good. See, because I didn't silence him, because I put most of my targets in darkness, he couldn't see them with his all-important you know, chance to do auto look sphere. So he instead did slow on these random targets. Now we can just backlash that for some damage. Nice. And now we can start maneuvering. Let's have you maybe walk over hereabouts. And let's drop a speed potion. And we will reaction destroy that. Not the movement, it's literally right there. That's weird. I'm going to have Shovel get in here and do that instead, maybe. Did that not actually apply to Astari despite him being in the range? Strange. And unfortunate. Well, very well. Next order of business, we want to try to hit him with some crowd control. But he is currently... Make way. Concentrating on slow, which is crippling Karlak. So we better do maybe a throw at him with the hand axe. Should hit, should force a constitution saving throw. He succeeded. That's not unexpected. In that case, I think I'd better try to force him to bleed to make him have disadvantage in those saving throws. 
So maybe I'll throw a spike bolt at him, which is guaranteed to hit. And guaranteed to just like bleed no matter what. Okay. Now maybe I'll shoot him. Okay, so made a saving throw, that's fine. I uh, might as well poke him with that, I guess. Someday he'll fail a saving throw. He'll roll a 1 or something like that. The chance is not that bad when you make him do a lot of saving throws, but haven't had any luck so far. Well, I think I will apply a hex to him now. And start pulverizing him with Eldred's Blast. Two more successes. Well, the reason that matters is I wanted to have Karlak soften him up with first an offhand shot and then also Ray of Frost so as to make him more vulnerable to other saving throw effects in general. But that's not going to work. So let's maybe just instead have her throw an object at him and see how that goes. We jump over to there, we should be able to do it. One other thing to know, the clips around here don't seem to actually be, you know, possible to knock someone off of or jump into. So I've tried shoving him in there, it doesn't work, he seems to be just impervious to it. Now I could, as I plan to do, put him in a stinking cloud, which is a saving throw he's not that great at, especially once he has disadvantage on it. You can make him fail that, but without him having, as I hope to inflict on him, some reverberation rounds and also baneful strike from Karlak, he will probably succeed at that one, so it's going to be less reliable. Let's focus instead of just doing brute force damage to him. There we go, that broke his concentration. Put him up. But she doesn't get her action back, okay. That's fine. Now, can you guys find an angle to hit him? There we go. You know what I should do? The bleed gave me advantage on my main characters, but not on these guys. I'll fly over here and have Ravens start pecking at him. That'll hopefully give me advantage against him that way. The odds are very good that one of them will hit. There we go. Okay, so now everyone has advantage against this guy. We should be able to just chew him up from here with any kind of decent luck, which is saying something, but I think we can do it. A starring can certainly finish him off from here. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's get around to Astorian's turn here. I'm heating up. He's actually letting Ballista... Okay, Ballista's initiative has changed for some reason. Very well. Anyway. What I wanted to say was, you might think, maybe I can knock him out and come back after a long rest and then talk to him then. That won't work because it's melt into a puddle no matter what you do. So, uh, sadly that won't be a way to get both the XP and also keep Gale. Let's have some carnage. Let's go. We could have a story and chow down on this snow cone though. Ah, oh, can't target constructs. Very well. Still breathing? We'll just have Ballista finish it then. Alright, with that we actually leveled up. Now I want to say that will not happen in an ordinary run of Act 1. I'm gonna talk about the way I got to level 8 in Act 1, which is normally impossible in an upcoming guide video. But there you have it. Those are my tactics for beating Elminster with a general purpose party. Know what your party is good at. Know what your characters are good at. If you have people who can smite and do all kinds of slashing flurry stuff or whatever, you know, you can blitz them down like that. But these are the ways to make him weak and control him efficiently, I would say. And protect yourself from him so you don't just get overwhelmed by his powerful spells. Thank you for watching, everyone. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Master Knight DH. Jackie, and Lino, George Grin, Travis, Carlo Andrea 97, Cthulhu's Mum, Andrew Curzon, Troobsy, Skill Rap, Gregory, William Wakefield, Danny Hall, Jeffrey Morse, Just Becca, Jack, Mashas01, Jacob Marshall, Nubiana, Till Fisher, Discord Colossus, Nicholas Schmuck, Kostya Nasarevich, Luke, Goman Blackrock, Dodo King 4, Marcin Bialik, Maveth, Techno Waffle, Nebular, I Loop, Michael Francis, Emperor Kong 420, Robin Maki, Mick and Balls, Daniel Sedajikado, Stilgen Flanny, Micah Marie, Christopher Allen, 
Stefan Van Zyl, Eddie, Wendy, Ali Kasamoglu, Lucas Riverola, Skylar Sauce, Nick Myers, Bethany James, Emp Ninjas, and Previn. Have a great day, everyone.